Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? Today I'll be doing a sneaker drawing on the upcoming Nike LeBron 16. So I was talking about Kobe Bryant as it is his birthday today and because tomorrow is Mamba Day. Let's get it! Now, if you guys enjoy the sneaker drawing videos, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy this content and are new. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications. And you guys already know, if I got a shoe that I'm doing a video of, you know the stencils on kickstarter.com. You even gotta ask. And I went ahead and I did some counting because I was curious to how many stencils are on the site. After today, there is over 150 different stencils for free on kickstart.com. When I say over 150, there's like 151, but still, the rounding it to 150 and saying that there's over sounds a lot better. But the point is, there's a lot of stencils on the site, all of which are free. You can send in stencil requests through the contact tab on the site as well. Now, even though it is Kobe Bryant's birthday today and tomorrow is Mamba Thay, I thought, you know what? What better way to honor Kobe Bryant than to do a video of LeBron James sneaker? Now, but for I actually want to do a video on the LeBron 16 earlier like a few weeks ago when the rumor images were announced but I didn't know if they were legit it wasn't really official but since LeBron James uploaded the images of the sneakers himself I'm like okay now it's definitely safe to say that this is gonna be the actual shoes because these are just officially announced I'm not sure what the actual name of the colorway is so whenever I find that out I'll be sure to change it in the title as well but you've all seen the images by now which is why I chose this particular colorway although it's pretty much safe to assume that it's gonna be called bread since you know it's kind of black and red all over and apparently the official release date is september 20th so a little less than a month from now now for me personally i like these shoes better than lebron 15 although i feel like with each lebron model it does something a little bit different than the other previous model didn't really do that for the most part and beginning i don't really like it but as i see the shoe more and more it kind of grows on me i have a feeling with this particular model the way the upper is set up how it has like those line effects going on where the outer lines and the inner lines different differentiate in color i feel like they can do some really interesting stuff with the colorways that'll make the shoe design really awesome or maybe they won't i guess we're gonna have to wait and see now besides the fact that these sneakers were just recently announced there is a legitimate reason why i chose to do a pair of lebron sneakers on kobe bryant's birthday the main reason is is that there was a good chunk of time where i didn't like either of these players for honestly really dumb reasons but let's go ahead and let's start with kobe so i'm sure you guys know this by now i started watching basketball officially in the 2000s 2008-2009 season. And I'm also sure a lot of you already know I am a Magic fan. I live in Florida so by default they're the home team and because I started watching basketball when I was in Florida I don't really have a bias towards another team so by default they're my team. And that was honestly a really really great season to start to getting into basketball especially with them being my team because as some of you guys know they went to the finals that year. They had Dwight Howard back when Dwight Howard was a stud just really wrecking every other center in the league. And overall the team was just really solid and I remember one of the things that really helped out the team a lot was their ability to hit the three ball. Like they always had a number of players that were just able to make an open three as well as you know doing a bunch of other stuff but especially in that run when they went to the finals hitting the three was super important as well as having a big center in the middle like Dwight Howard. Now I know a lot of people like to argue like okay they really shouldn't have made it to the finals that year it should have been the Celtics so that way it would have been the back to back and that would have been a nice little three-peat that they would have had going on but whatever you want to say doesn't matter because they made it to the finals and that was super awesome which is why it absolutely sucked to see them lose to the Lakers in five games. Kobe averaged 32 points for the series like come on Kobe why you gotta do that against my magic? I know I wasn't a basketball fan at all until then but come on man you broke my heart bro you broke my heart. So of course by default since that was my first season actually watching NBA basketball I dislike Kobe from that point and it really didn't help since the following season he also beat the Celtics in seven games and he won two titles back to back. Like I can tell you after that happened I was so upset I wasn't like depressed but I was so distraught just like kind of living a life knowing that Kobe Bryant just won two championships back to back and my Orlando Magic didn't even have a chance to get to the finals that season. I believe that season they lost to like the Hawks or something I don't know they didn't really make it really far I felt like okay that 2009 season was probably a fluke and now it just sucks to be a basketball fan. And then a few years later Dwight Howard goes to the Lakers and he plays with Kobe Bryant I'm like oh my god this sucks sucks because not only does he go to play with the enemy he left my team and now my team's gonna suck and sure enough since then we've sucked 
Like, we might be interesting this season, but man, it's been so hard to be a Magic fan. Actually, no, it's not because I don't have to watch the games. I know that they're gonna lose, so what do I have to watch the games for? But it's crazy though. It wasn't until LeBron went to Miami that I really started to appreciate Kobe for all that he was. Because when LeBron went to Miami, he became, in my mind, the new bad guy. And I'm sure in a lot of people's minds too, but at least for me, it's like, oh my God, you just kind of ruined the league. You made a super team. How is anybody supposed to beat you guys? All this other stuff. Because my attention was now on disliking LeBron, I kind of took all my anger away towards Kobe and I can finally see him in an objective point of view. I can see how great of an NBA player that he was and I can really start to appreciate all of his accomplishments that he was going to start to rack up. Like those five championships that he racked up were no joke and I know a lot of people talk about how definitely if Kobe wasn't on that Lakers team then they could have still potentially won. And even though I didn't watch that series as it was happening in real time, of course I looked back and I looked at the footage of the highlights of the games, but I've seen enough interviews recently where it's like Shaq and Kobe kind of talking about each other. And just the connection they have in hindsight makes me think, man, if they didn't have each other, that whole dynasty wasn't gonna happen. Like Shaq is always gonna be Shaq, but I feel like the connection that they had, how well they worked in tandem with each other, like that's how some of this stuff is formed. Like their greatness together was just undeniable and obviously getting three championships in a row kind of proves that. So yeah, LeBron going to Miami kind of held up all the anger that I had from Kobe and it really started to show him in a different light in my mind. And then it wasn't until LeBron left Miami and he went back to Cleveland that I was also able to appreciate LeBron for who he was. Because just like Kobe, now LeBron wasn't the enemy and for a year or two there wasn't really any enemies in my mind in the NBA. So it was pretty much like a two year window where I could kind of see the NBA objectively as a fan and I can appreciate all that it brought to me. Now Kevin Durant's in the Warriors so now I have somebody to dislike but the point is with both of those players it took a little bit of me getting outside of my ego, outside of my perspective to appreciate them for who they are. I didn't dislike those players because they were like the 13th player coming off the bench on a bad team. I disliked those players because they were so good and their greatness was undeniable and it was causing me to be upset because my teams didn't have any chance. But that's what happens with great players. They kind of do that to other teams. And who knows, maybe this path will continue and eventually I'll be able to see Kevin Durant in a different light. But until that happens, we're just gonna have to wait and see. It's funny though, back when I first started watching basketball, I absolutely hated Kobe. I wanted nothing to do with him. I didn't want to see any of his highlights. I would literally turn the channel if the Lakers are playing because that's how much I honestly disliked him. Now the moment Kobe talks about anything, the moment he drops a project or if he's doing a documentary or a miniseries, anything, I'm like, oh man, I gotta watch this ASAP. Funny how time changes things. Things, don't it kobe bryant i know you watch my videos you're retired so you ain't got nothing else better to do but <laughs> i just want to let you know i think you're a really good basketball player and it would have been cool if you just would have had four championships and my orlando magic would have won that year and i'm gonna leave it at that but that's going to do it for today's video if you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications Don't forget to check out kickstart.com for all your sneaker stencil needs check out the other videos on the channel you guys already know i'm uploading daily and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yay!